All right, hey, what's going on, guys? Today, this uh, third gen Forerunner, it's a uh, model year, whatever, '97. We got a, uh, we've got a slight oil leak, pretty decent oil leak. So I'm, uh, I checked out under the car, and I could see that it was for sure leaking from. Uh, sorry, one second. So we got this 97 over here and it's got a little bit of oil leak and it's a four wheel drive, V6 3.4 and uh, since it's 4x4 four four, you have the front differential there and you can't really access this little oil cooler from directly below. So I know I've seen a couple of videos where people are able to get up there with a breaker bar from underneath and since this one's four wheel drive you don't have that uh, that possibility so I'm going to go ahead and make this video helping out people who do have a four-wheel drive and do have an oil leak because at Toyota they quoted me a thousand dollars to reseal the oil pan and it's a possibility that that could be where the leak is coming from but I know for a fact that this is leaking as well so what I'm going to do is since parts for this and accessing this is a lot easier than accessing the uh, oil pan since it's 4x4. Four four. I'm going to go ahead and attack this, get this knocked out of the way, then get it all cleaned up. That way if uh, if that oil leak does come back then I know that I got to reseal the pan. And at that point this will already be done so I won't have to you know retrace my steps. But I'm I'm guaranteeing that this was leaking because it I could see the active leak, you know, a drop coming down from here and there's the possibility that the oil pan needs to be resealed as well however that is going to be a very in-depth job because you got to drop the front diff you got to pull the front axles it's not too big of a, a deal but um, definitely don't want to have to do more work if uh, it's not required so basically I'm going to show you how I got this little oil pump or oil uh, cooler off because, like I said, it's 4x4 four four and it's a little bit different than a two-wheel drive. So, let's see here. So, some people I've seen with, uh, with their two-wheel drive V6 if you check it out from up top here there's definitely no way to get down there so what you're going to want to do first things first is drain your oil so we got the oil drain and you've got two coolant lines that sit on top of your oil cooler pump oil cooler that's uh, this one here and that one there when it's mounted it's on the side of the block just like this so those sit on top basically you're going to want to pull those two lines off and they have coolant running through them so some people uh, they'll drain their coolant system but you're still going to have residual coolant in those lines so regardless you're going to lose a little bit of coolant if you not detrimental or anything just top it off when you're done just remember to do that Personally, I didn't want to do that because I've done it before and um, I've had to drain my coolant before and it's not very fun. It's not very hard, it's just more work than I want to have to do. Trying to avoid doing X extra work for sure so you can see I got a set of uh, vice grips in there it's just pinching off one of the coolant lines and I've got another one back up there you can see it in the back um, these ones I've got just some normal vice grips on that one clamp down and those ones you can't quite see it, but I'll be sure to uh, get a picture of what those ones look like. Basically, they're vice grips, and they've got a flat edge on both 
uh, of the clamping sides. So those are probably the safer bet. That was uh, I picked those up at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap. Those are um, it was like for body work, and like I said, that one's just a normal vice grip. But definitely that one's going to be the safer bet to use, I think, because that one's got two flat edges and it doesn't really seem to bite the hose too hard. Um, this set over here, it's the normal set so it's got ridges on there and there's a possibility that you could rip the hose just be aware of that I'm aware of that so I didn't you know go crazy clamping force wise and I didn't use it to pull the hose off I just clamped it so it's just enough to hold back the fluid that's in there now in order to access this area you might have a dust shield right here I didn't, but what I'm talking about is one of these little flaps here, right? So it's held in by a couple of clips if you do have one. And then to get back there, you have this harness wire, and that mounts to the side of your block there. See that the harness wire is it's got this little mount on there and you can slide it off the clip I wasn't able to slide it off the clip so I just unbolted it from the block so either way it's not wrong uh, whatever you gotta do to just get it out of the way then you have this big old banjo bolt which is holding in your oil cooler and um, basically that one is a 24 and it's on there about 43 foot pounds so you're gonna need I used a breaker bar just to uh, just to break it free and an extension and a half inch swivel and then that's a 24 long uh, deep socket and just came in through here I went ahead and went under that brake line there with the extension um, just made it a little bit easier of an angle and kind of held up that harness out of the way there enough to break it free started loosening the bolt when you loosen the bolt it does have some oil in there so it's going to drop out some oil be aware of that too and then to pull it out I just pulled it straight out this way um, kind of maneuvered it a little bit because you've got the upper arm there and you've got the brake line there but it came through right here you could probably get it out a different way depending on uh, what you're trying to do or where you were trying to go with it. Now we're at this phase here where it's off of the car and you can see mine's clogged up there which is not very good at all. Um, considering that this is an oil cooler line that's probably not cooling my oil very well so I'm going to go ahead and stick a pick in there kind of loosen it up, try to flush it out with some brake cleaner and hopefully we can get this thing moving again. Uh, I do have a new radiator on here so it shouldn't have too much junk in the system but that is definitely enough junk to block up the system which is a little bit worrisome. However this car does have 307,000 miles and I've never had one overheating issue with it. Um, there is no oil temp gauge on there for me I don't believe. Uh, I could be completely wrong, and I probably am. I just have never seen the oil temp get hot, so it's doing its job enough to the point where the oil's not blowing up my car, but definitely I'm going to get that fixed because that's not right. Um, be sure to check that on yours as well. Um, I personally don't know if yours is going to be clogged up or not, but the fact that mine is, that's all the more possibility that yours can be. So basically on these, you've got this seal here, which is your main o-ring, and then on your banjo bolt there, you're going to have another seal. Let me go ahead and grab that. I actually haven't checked this one yet. So, let's see. I don't even know where it is. It might have popped off somewhere might have not had one on there at all. I, not real positive. Which is kind of a concern.
but uh anyways there should be a seal right here and it should be it should go on that bolt there I honestly have no idea where mine is I wasn't really paying attention when I popped it off of there but I'll go ahead and look up there and see if I can find it anyways I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing cleaned out and I'll uh I'll get back to you once it is but some people have some junk up in there too it doesn't look like I've got junk up in there so that's a good sign um, but definitely a concern as to why that thing's clogged up the car runs great other than that but I'm glad that I found that out so that I can get it taken care of um, what I'm going to do to clean this up I've got some very fine steel wool like very fine not just that one that you would use to scrape dishes but uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the edges here some brake cleaner I'm going to go ahead and be sure not to scratch or gouge the ceiling area in here it looks like you've got one scratch right in here right there um, but that's before the seal so it shouldn't be a problem hopefully it shouldn't be a problem and once I get that thing cleaned up I'll get back to you See, it's just breaking apart in there. That thing's literally not a seal at all anymore at this point. It's plastic. You hear that? <laughs> and I wouldn't doubt that it's that way because this thing's probably been getting real hot. So that combined with it being the original seal, combined with having 300,000 miles, safe to say that this thing is ready to be replaced. Okay, so this is how uh, how clean I've got it so far. Definitely a whole lot better. Still got some junk coming out of it. I'm trying to clear this tube right now. And you can see all of that junk that has come out of there. So I'm guessing that that is very clogged up. And since coolant runs through it, I'm going to put the hose on this end of it. And not stop spraying it, building up pressure, until I see it clear out of this side. Because that is definitely not going back on the car yet. Let's see if it even comes out. So far, nothing. So, I've got this here pretty clean. This uh, should be able to flow through now. This is pretty clean. Um, just beware that when you take yours out, if you're using something like this, that you don't gouge it up too much. Um, like I said, I did my absolute best being as careful as I could with it. But based on how dried out that thing was, uh, the old o-ring, there's really not much I could do but at the same time I'm sure that any o-ring that was that bad and still held a seal uh, probably would be just fine 
considering that we're putting on a new one. So, this is the part number. And this is the other part number. This is the washer and uh, that goes on your big old bolt there. And this one goes right in the middle here. I'm going to put a thin little coat, barely any, of uh, just some new oil. And on that one, I'm going to go ahead and clean that bolt up and put a, just a thin layer of some oil on there. And I'll... All right. Well, as expected, that uh, tube that goes into that is also caked up and absolutely jam-packed with a bunch of junk and it goes into a fitting that's also on the side of the block. Now when I pull that hose it would be really nice to see some coolant as much as I don't want to see coolant spill all over the place I would really like to see coolant come out and spill all over the place for the uh, for reason being that if you don't see coolant when you pull that hose off, that's going to go ahead and mean that no coolant is getting cycled through. i got to be kind of quick here because I just have a blue rag pushed in that fitting. It started pissing out coolant as soon as I pulled it off. So thank God this looks like this is the only thing that uh, was clogged up there. Check that out. This is the side that goes into the block. And this is the side that's blocked. Um, I don't think that that cooling system uh, or that coolant is going to hold long with that blue towel there. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and go get this cleared out, cleaned out, and replaced back on there. Um, literally chunk chunk and you try to put water through it and nothing nothing pressurize it nothing squirt it in there nothing so we got look at look at that what the fuck see that is so bad that is so freaking bad. Got a stick here. Let's use this stick to clear the blockage. Holy cow. Oh my goodness. That is awful, dude. Still nothing. It's like right here in the in the tube, right in the corner of it. Oh my god. By the way, this is, this is you definitely don't want to see all this. Like when you're doing this, this is the worst thing that you could probably be encountering. One of them, for damn sure. That is not good to have in your coin system. Obviously a stick isn't the best tool to use for this, but uh, it's got a curve, why not?
Okay, that is cleared out. Expecting anything to be perfect on this thing? But how the hell was the car even running, dude? Like, straight up. That was clogged. That oil cooler pump was clogged. Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembling this stuff. Um, I got everything cleaned up pretty much. I gotta change my gloves out. I'm gonna get those seals on there. I'm gonna start reassembling this thing. Cause, uh, at this point, it's just the reverse order. And, uh, basically, make sure your surfaces are all clean. Make sure your tubes aren't clogged. Make sure that your, uh, oil cooler where it cycles through is not clogged. Make sure everything's cleaned up well. Reassemble it all. We'll catch back up once we're done with that.